welcome back. It's such a beautiful and sunny day outside, so I thought it'd be the perfect day to film. And this video is going to be a collection slash haul of all of my vintage designer pieces that I've collected over the past five years. I'm very into this concept because it truly allows me to appreciate my own collection that I've carefully picked out and grown slowly over the years rather than a big giant group of things all acquired at once. I feel like that's the popular theme on the internet. There's a huge abundance of brands and gifting and marketing and new collections being released at such a rapid rate and that makes sense for the current climate in fashion but I love this opportunity to slow it down and show a bunch of pieces that I've fallen in love with over a long-ish five years isn't that long but you know period of time and truly reworn and styled in so many different ways and truly loved over and over again so without further ado i'm going to start with a big pile of clothing that i have sitting next to me and then i'm going to go into accessories and shoes so my first item is actually oh, okay this comme des garcons jacket that i found at second street vintage in noho manhattan it's really, really cool, but it's honestly one of the pieces that I cannot style properly because it's not made for someone my size and it doesn't fit me at all. I just really love all of these fraying details all over the piece. The pockets look so beautiful as well. The fraying also creates a sort of contrast stitch effect throughout the entire piece. And the buttons are also really cute. I love the sort of suede rough leather and the color all throughout. It looks like it's stained and and just a mixture of browns and reds but I get no wear out of it because it is so big and it swallows me whole I just don't feel like I would ever want to sell it just because it is such a piece of art and as soon as I saw it in the store I ran over to it because it just fit this vision and creation I had in my mind and it could always come in handy for a styling piece. Continuing on with a red theme, this is a pair of Marc Jacobs suit pants that I picked up at a 260 sample sale on Lafayette Street in New York City. Not vintage, but I wanted to include it anyway just because it is a special piece that I group with all the rest of them. It has a really beautiful houndstooth pattern all throughout. It has really gorgeous pocket details. Right above the large pocket, it has this patch that's made out of vinyl. It says Marc Jacobs, established in 1984. It's actually ripping a bit. Where is it? Yeah, over here. Which I didn't realize until I picked it up to take a look at for this video. But I will definitely still wear these to death. And if I pick it up when it's gotten too worn out to use, it'll still look good underneath without it. These pants are such a go-to every time I want to throw on something that makes me look put together just because of the structure and the way that they sit. They sit really perfectly on the waist and they're a little bit short compared to a normal pant, which is perfect for me because I am 5'1", so they hit my ankle at the perfect spot. And I always love wearing red. I wear a lot of red and black randomly and this works with so many pieces I already have. Next up is this Issey Miyake top that I got from Depop. It's part of their Pleats Please collection and I love the color throughout the garment. I love that it's not one solid color and instead has all these hints of a darker gray and steely almost blue color palette. I've always loved Issey Miyake and I think that they are pretty flattering shirts. I've noticed a little bit of debate on TikTok as to whether or not they are flattering just because the pleats create an interesting shape on the body rather than just something you'd expect from a t-shirt material or a jersey knit. But the responses to the original video where it was saying adamantly that pleats please is not flattering were that the concept of this shirt is to be an experiment, a sculpture, and an art piece and interact with the environment and every different person that puts it on. It's something more obvious to see in a video or outside when the wind is blowing and you're walking around and it bounces and moves in its own different way on each different person. Everyone also looks different in their own way and it's interesting how this one piece can interact with people in vastly different ways and interact with the environment as well. I love that it's a concept rather than just a piece of clothing, although I don't consider any of these to be like just a piece of clothing. I feel like they all come from a world and a journey of craftsmanship and creative direction in order to become what they are, but just seeing that this is like an active moving sculpture is really cool to me. This is a Vivian Westwood screen print top featuring their iconic 
orb logo right over here. I love the colors of this. It's a little bit big than a t-shirt that I would normally wear, but I still love this. It's very comfortable and the pattern is so beautiful. I love the colors of it and it also is a part of their brand's history. I was wearing it one day at one of my friend's houses and her roommate is a designer at a brand right now in New York City and she was talking about how in one of her classes they went on a whole lecture about this kind of screen print and designers who have used it in history and it's also a popular print and style that people are replicating now and have been for the past few years and through quarantine people were screen printing at home and doing similar techniques like sublimation. I got this from the same Second Street location as the Comme des Garcons jacket and the screen print has honestly held up so nicely. I don't see any imperfections throughout the entire piece at all and I've had it for a while. This is also from their red label and the tag is so cute. I love the pink and the red. That's one of my favorite color combinations. And then if you flip it, it's the inverse colors, which is also really nice. I just love looking at it and diving into all of its details. There's a little star up here that's so cute. There's some words that don't necessarily point to what they mean, but it seems like Vivian Westwood or whichever designers were working on this specific piece had a story that they were inspired by or took pieces of to then add to this garment and make it its own thing without really revealing what that is. I also like this bottom detail because it makes the piece flow really nicely when you're walking especially. It just like forms in a different way than a more constricted piece would. The back is slightly longer than the front because of that and I love that it's such a little subtle design choice. It's one that you wouldn't normally think of as the forefront, but every little tiny detail involves a lot of thought and creation. Another piece from Depop is this Burberry skirt, which is one of my favorite pieces to wear. I've worn this so many times and styled it in so many different ways. This is a really nice wool and a really beautiful color. Instead of the iconic Burberry Novacek, it's green and has these little hints of purple throughout the tartan, and I love that it's a darker a more subtle shade than I would consider the original Novacek to be. I feel like it goes with so many more pieces and you can style it in tons of different ways. And it's funny to say that because it is purple and green rather than beige and neutral colors as the other one, but I feel like the fact that it's overall darker does make it more wearable than the other one. Another detail that I love on it is this frayed hem at the bottom. I think it's really beautiful and just slightly, subtly edgy. It fits so perfectly. I love this thick waistband as well. And it always just lands at the perfect length for me. I am just obsessed with this piece and will wear it literally every single week or so for the rest of my life. This next skirt is in a similar style and length as the Burberry skirt. This is from Millie and I found this at Crossroads on 26th Street in Manhattan. That in itself is a rare thing for me because I do not love Crossroads and Buffalo Exchange. I feel like they're very overpriced and sell a lot of brands like Shein and Zara for probably more than they actually would be on their original website. This was hanging on the top in one of their little designer sections and it was very cheap compared to what the hanging up pieces usually are. It was only $30. It has a really, really unique sort of sewing pattern and I was once wearing it at school and a fashion design student came up to me to admire it and just examine it and figure out what it was because the way that it curves and falls at the same time with the overall structure of the piece was really unique and created its own flattering look. I love the leather waistband on top. This is a fake button up here because it's a zippered skirt. I'm actually hanging it up a little bit lopsided so you'll see the zipper there but yeah. This is a really cool fake button detail. And something about it that's a bit unusual for me to like is the fact that the inner lining is actually broken and you can see the satin poking out. I honestly love the way that it gives this piece an asymmetrical extra detail, extra texture. I know that it's not meant to look like that, but it is something that I really enjoy. So I always wear this skirt and just like the Burberry one, I'm going to wear it until I can no longer wear it. Next up is another piece that I have trouble styling, which is this Coogee sweater. This one's a little bit easier to style than the Comme des Garcons jacket. It's just that I think I need a big skirt to go with this rather than a pair of pants. It's so, so big, frumpy and cozy. And I love the color palette of it. It's not that typical rainbowy 
messy looking Kuji sweater, which is really amazing and it has its own value too. It's very, very popular, but I like that this one was more subdued and neutral. It could be worn with a lot of different things. I will say the peach aspect of it is not my favorite, but the overall wearability and neutral shades of it are really nice to me. The vintage tag is really adorable. I love it so much. And yeah, I just love the construction of it, how it's knitted with all these different swirls and movement throughout it. One of my favorites, if not to wear, just to own as a work of art and someone's inspiration. I got that piece from Mercari. I was using Mercari a lot during the first big like COVID lockdown, but I do not love it anymore because it is very much like people throwing out random junk from their house. I was just lucky enough to find that one while I was looking. This next pair of pants is from that same Second Street vintage location in NoHo, New York City. This is a pair of Burberry corduroy pants and I love all of the big giant cargo pockets. There's this one and this one's also really deep and the back ones are really cute too. Hidden under the back pockets is the Burberry Nova Check and you can also see it under these ones as well. And then on this pocket we have Burberry's little logo embroidered in such a subtle way. These pants go with everything due to the fact they are so neutral and everything is very subtle and subdued. And they're also very comfortable. I like where these also sit on the waist and they're also not too long on me. Next is this beautiful elevated basic Prada Sport tank top. It's such a fun piece to wear because I honestly wear it in so many different ways. So this is the front way and then sometimes I also turn it around and it has this double zip so I will often unzip the bottom one up to the top and wear it as a vest with my outfit peeking out underneath. It's a very nicely shaped tank top with strong structure and it hugs the waist and cinches in in such a nice way. It's form-fitting without being a t-shirt material looking piece. It definitely looks like it has its own shape, but is designed so well that it fits nicely like that. The zippers are so cute. I love the very tiny and subtle Prada logo on them. And of course, this iconic little tiny red stripe that is on most of their sport clothing and is just a very, very subtle way of embellishing their pieces with their name. The neoprene mesh is really cool and it layers really nicely with other pieces and this is one of my favorites because of how simple it is and yet makes an outfit look elevated and put together. I wanted to include this next piece kind of as a joke just because of the way that people were viewing these types of hoodies on the internet during a time when people would resell them for $400. But this is, yes, this is the 2008, I think, Hot Topic New Moon collection, and literally people were selling this on Depop for $400, so I was lucky to not find it for that price. Only $100 on eBay. Kind of a silly purchase, but it's so funny to pretend that this is like archival vintage, just based on how sought after for no reason this exact sweater was. The quote on the back is really pretty in this font. And it's just a very nostalgic and fun piece, also very comfortable, and I do like the way that it fits with most of my pieces. And I can wear it a little bit ironically, but also feeling really good in it as well. The final clothing piece before moving on to the accessories and shoes, and you'll have to excuse the wrinkles, but it's this diesel skirt, and this is such a fun and brightly colored piece compared to everything else that I have. But I'm really obsessed with it. I love the big waistband. I've always wanted to collect more cotton and soft skirts like this because of the way that they fit. They're very flattering. And this diesel one, which is very brightly colored and eccentric Italian vintage piece, was perfect. And I'm obsessed with it. I've only just started wearing it and styling it, but I'm so excited to see tons more combinations that it would go really well with. The first accessory of this collection is this pair of Vivian Westwood gloves. I love the stitching most of all. This navy and blue combination and I love this orange band on the wrist. When I put the glove on, you can see the details between the fingers and I really love that aspect as well. They literally fit perfectly and they're such a cute glove. They're I would say sort of warm, but I don't know if I can judge it correctly considering New York is just 
extremely cold. Very, very cute, and I will always wear these gloves. Even though they're pretty embellished with the orb logo and all of the colors, they are pretty subtle just because of that navy all throughout. And you can always hide this orange underneath a jacket sleeve. The next accessory is this pair of Oakley Shield-ish glasses. I think they're a bit of a combination between shields and aviators. And I don't wear them as much as I did when I first got them because they're very bulky and not very chic at all. And I don't really love the reflections that much, but they're very nicely made and I do love them. I would still wear them for driving and just like when I genuinely need to protect my eyes rather than something I'd enjoy for fashion, but I do still enjoy them for fashion. I guess I might evolve into liking them more at another time, as that tends to happen, and that's why it's good to have a long-standing collection. Next up is this Anna Sui tie that's also a bit of a necklace. I love the material of it, how it's this leather, but with this really nice texture all over it, and it's such an easy way to make an outfit a bit more interesting or a little bit more edgy. I wear it all the time and it's just so simple because I still don't know how to tie a tie properly. So it does the work for me in that respect. This one is so exciting to me. It's this Y3 Adidas collaboration British paperboy newsboy like flat cap. And I love the blue and orange all throughout. I originally was going to get a white one, but then noticed that in the listing it was so dirty and this one was in better condition. So picked up this one instead and again with the subtle navy dark colors kind of thing, it goes with a lot of things even though it has the orange throughout. And I think this has to be like the next cool hat that's a little bit edgy and a little bit punk. I really want this to become really popular. And I want it to be like a 2024 trend so badly. It totally encompasses both like indie sleeves, eclectic grandpa styles that are going around a lot right now. And just because of the British aspect of it, it's perfect for indie sleeves and those grunge movements that were pretty much pioneered in England and grew popularity over there. But yeah, I wear this any chance I get. It's just so much fun and it's such a flattering hat in general. Like it fits so nicely. I have two bags before I move on to the shoes. The first one being this vintage YSL bag. This bag is my mom's but she lets me wear it. It's really nice worn crossbody. It's very comfortable when going out. So I always gravitate to it for comfort and convenience reasons. I'm not so big on light brown leather because to me it's very cowboy boyish western and I haven't ever really been able to amalgamate those aspects into my style but such a beautiful and classic bag and since it was sort of passed on to me I will continue passing this one on and finally for the bags this Prada bag with this beautiful chain strap was given to me by the first stylist that I assisted it's very small but it's perfectly chic and compact for a small amount of items on a night out. And I wear this bag all the time. I love that it's this very sleek black color and a little bit shiny. And the chain itself, it's so chic and edgy at the same time. And that is a common theme throughout most of the pieces that I love. And finally for the shoes, this is my pair of 80s angels in this beautiful iridescent blue color. They're a bit chunky for my height so I haven't worn them in a while but my go-to way of wearing them has always been with a pair of pants that hits over the top of them and is a little bit wide leg so it doesn't look like my leg is here and this is a giant shoe. I was inspired by seeing someone wear these exact shoes in this color in the FIT cafeteria where I go to school in my first semester and I was so in love with how unique they were. I had never seen anything like this before I saw that pair and I found this pair on Depop and hopefully I find a way to wear them again in the future because they are such an, an incredible piece and I want to give them that love and attention. And finally from Depop as well, these patent leather Mew Mew pumps are just so stunning. They look like they're in brand new condition because the person only wore it once. The shine on them and also the red buckles are some of my favorite things. This red buckle is such a unique detail on a shoe. I had never really seen it. This stacked belt situation in a row and they look so good. They're such a gorgeous silhouette instead of being 
overall chunky shoe like was very popular a few years ago. They're a little bit more toned down and skinnier and subtle and I just love wearing these so much. They hurt a bit so I'll always have to bring like a little backup ballet flat with me when I wear these but it is worth it because of how stunning they are. And that was everything from clothing pieces to accessories and bags and shoes. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of these and always remember to give the pieces that you've had for so long some extra love. Rewear them as many times as you want. Style them in so many different ways because they all have endless possibilities and there's no reason to discard such a beautiful piece that you once loved and wanted so badly to collect just because you have new things or because new things are in style. I think it's very valuable to slow down and appreciate these pieces rather than always speeding ahead to the next thing because the internet is already so fast paced when it comes to fashion, circulation, and all of the new collections coming out at every season and honestly every single day. And also you can be much more creative when you're focusing on the pieces that you already have and trying your best to figure out new combinations rather than needing to buy something new in order to style something that feels fresh. When you are limited in that respect, you're pushing yourself creatively a little bit more and you're really utilizing these pieces that you really loved when you originally picked them out to their fullest potential, giving them so many different combinations and innovating them a little bit because when you are pushed to that point, you start to create new ways to wear pieces and I think it's hard to be more picky and authentic and innovative with styling and creative direction when you have too many options because you might just throw together something that was right in front of your eyes and you just pick it out because it's brand new but it's not doing anything interesting that you can work on and figure out by spending hours of time with what you have and truly examining it in the way that you would a piece of art or a project or something really meaningful. I hope you enjoyed both my explanations of the pieces and also the try-ons and the ways that I styled each of these. I hope you've also had a great day and if you want to keep up with more photos of how I style pieces like this and my editorial styling and editorial photography you can follow my Instagram I also have TikTok and Pinterest if you're interested, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!